In this video, we will learn about the basics of Amazon Athena and its benefits. Amazon Athena is a serverless and interactive query service within the Amazon Web Services platform. It makes it easy for users to analyze data directly using standard SQL. It does not require any infrastructure setup. To run any queries, it allows users to quickly analyze data stored in Amazon S3 using standard SQL commands. Amazon Athena is automatically scalable, wherein it allows users to run multiple queries in parallel to achieve faster processing results. It can handle large-scale datasets as well as complex data queries. Now, let us dive into other features of Athena. It helps users to analyze raw, unstructured data and structured or semi-structured data that is stored in Amazon S3. Data can exist in multiple formats such as CSV, JSON or even in Apache formats. Users can use Amazon Athena to run queries directly without having to load data from S3 or other data warehouses. Further, on the downstream end, data from Amazon Athena can be visualized easily using Amazon QuickSight. Businesses can also use Athena to generate summary reports and to deploy business intelligence tools to explore and analyze data. Athena has integrations with Amazon Blue Data Catalog, whereby it allows users to create tables and query data based on the central metadata store available across AWS platform. As Athena is a serverless service, users only pay for queries that they run and their query results are delivered within few seconds. It allows users to bypass the process of creating complex ETL jobs to prepare the data for analysis. Now, let us look at Amazon Athena benefits. Amazon Athena is a serverless service and requires no need to set up any additional infrastructure. Using Amazon Athena, no ETL is needed. The users just need to point Athena to the data in Amazon S3, define the schema, and then start querying data without running extract, transform, and loading steps. It is open and versatile. It uses standard SQL and works with a variety of commonly used data formats along with S3 as its data source. It is fast and scalable and executes queries in parallel and therefore delivers results even for complicated queries. It follows a pay-as-you-use structure. Users pay a few dollars per terabyte of data scanned and no extra cost for storing, extracting and transforming data. In this video, we will learn how tables, databases, and data catalogs work in Athena and how to query data in Athena from other AWS services. In Amazon Athena, users need to create tables and databases with metadata definitions that set schemas for the underlying data in S3. There is a table that complements each dataset and it contains metadata that directs Athena to the right location on Amazon S3 and also states the structure of the data including the column headers, type of data and the name of the tables. Database in Athena are the next logical grouping of tables that also contain metadata and schema information. Now let us look at how we can use tables in Amazon Athena. Before users can query data, they need to create a tables automatically or manually. Creating a tables automatically registers the data with Athena and this registration happens in the AWS Glue data catalog. Once a table is created, users can use SQL statements to query the data and specify exact file locations for source data and for storing query results. Now let us look at features of AWS Glue data catalog. As Glue Data Catalog is accessible through the AWS platform, users can easily see databases and tables created using Athena. When new queries are received, Amazon Athena uses Presto, which is a distributed SQL engine to execute the queries. Apart from AWS Glue Data Catalog, Athena can be used to query data from a host of AWS services such as AWS CloudFormation, CloudFront, QuickSight, and Step Functions. In this video, we will see how we can use AWS Athena to query results. We will learn how to use Athena to query data from S3. Following the steps from the video, you could then build a query to retrieve data from any data source or any data format. So let's get started. On the screen, we can see the AWS Management Console. 
using the search bar on the top, we can find the link to AWS Athena console. So, in the search bar, let us type AWS Athena. Let's click on the top result that should read as Athena. This will take us to the AWS Athena console. If you were using AWS Athena for the first time, you would have been directed to another screen. On that screen, you can click on the Get Started button to reach to the Athena console that we have currently on the screen. In order to run a query on Athena, the first step is to configure the SQL database by connecting the source data and then defining the schema of the source data to an SQL table. After the SQL table is set up with the schema of the source data, we can run any SQL query using Athena console. To set up the table, let's find the Create Table button on the left panel of the screen. On a single left click of this button, a new dialog box opens up, where we can choose the option to Create Table from S3 Bucket Data option. On the Create Table console screen, we need to first configure the database in Step 1. We can either create a new database by giving our name of choice, or we can use the drop down under Create Database located under Step 1 to choose an existing table. In our case, we will be using the drop down to choose an existing table. We can choose the existing table with the name Sample DB. In the same section and subsequent text box, we can give a table name. Let's give the name as Results. In the subsequent text box that reads as Location of Input Data Set, we have to paste the path link to the input data source. For this, we can access the S3 console to copy the right path link from there. Since I have the S3 console open on another tab, let me switch the tab and copy the required path. Once the path is copied successfully, we can go back to the Athena console to paste the path. Please note that this copied path should represent the location of source data without the file name. To follow the configuration requirement, let me delete the file name from my source path. Once the path is successfully copied, we can click on the next button on the bottom left of the center screen. On the second step, we are required to configure the format of the data. For this, let me open the data screen for you and we will review the data that we will be working with. Since I have the screen already opened, let me go there. As you can see from the selected rows, our data is in the CSV format. This data represents the daily price data of US dollar against Canadian dollar with the headers date, price, open, high, low, and change. So, on going back to the Athena console, we can choose the CSV radio button under the data format. Once done, we can click on the next on bottom left of the center screen to proceed to the next step. On step 3, we are required to set the schema of our SQL table. We can use the bulk add columns button on the center of the screen to configure data columns from our table. In the dialog box that's opened on the screen, we have to give column names along with the data column type separated by commas. Earlier, as we saw that our CSV data table contains six columns, namely date, price, open, high, low, and change. So let's enter appropriate commands in the center of the dialog box. Firstly, we have the date column with data type date. Separated by a comma, we have the second column, price, with data type float. Again, we'll place a comma to separate the fields. Our third column is open, again, with data type float. Separated by a comma, we have the fourth column, high, with data type float. Then we have column low, with data type float. Finally, we have the change column, with data type float. Once you have a similar command on your screen, we can click on the Add button on the bottom right of the dialog box to proceed to the next step. Once the columns are configured, we can scroll down on the screen and click on the Next button on the bottom left of the screen. The step 4 for creating partitions is optional, so we can skip that and click on the Create Table button located at the bottom left. Once our table is created, it will show on the left console under the Tables header. So let's check out the fields under the Tables column. On clicking the arrow button next to the results table, we can view the configured columns. Now, on the center of the screen, we are ready to write a first query. For that, at the center of the screen, let's go to tab 1 that reads as New Query 1. We can remove this code over here by selecting it and pressing the delete button. 
To test whether we have set up Athena correctly, we can test with a simple query to give the average of say the price column or the high price column. For that, enter an SQL command at the center of the screen. The command will be select in capitals the command average avg and in round brackets we can give the name of the column for which we want to get the average of. Let's take the average of high column and then close the round brackets. After a single space, we can give the name of the column in the results table. Let's call it mean underscore high. On pressing the enter key, we can go on to the second line. Here, we can write command from in capitals and give the name of the table. That will be results. Now, we can end the query statement by typing in the semicolon. Now, we are ready to run the query. We can simply click on the Run Query button on the bottom left of the center screen. On scrolling down, we can see that our query is running under the results column. Under the results section, we can see a mean underscore high column with the result average value of high column in our S3 table. Since we've got a response for our SQL query, it means that our setup for Athena is successful. Also, it is important to note that we can retrieve the query results from the S3 bucket as the query results are also stored there. I will leave that up to you to retrieve the query results from the S3 bucket. Now, following the same steps, you will be able to create more complex queries or connect data from sources other than S3 or in format other than CSV. In this video, we will learn about basics of Amazon QuickSight and its benefits. Amazon QuickSight is a machine learning powered, serverless and business intelligence service that allows users to create and publish dynamic dashboards which can be accessed from a device or can be embedded into websites, portals or other applications. Now let us look at some of the features of Amazon QuickSight. Like Athena, QuickSight is also a serverless service that can be automatically scaled to accommodate thousands of users without additional infrastructure and capacity investments. This ensures high performance of the dashboards during peak hours when multiple users access the same datasets. Consequently, QuickSight is also a pay-per-use service, therefore optimizes cost for large-scale data representations. QuickSight has a rich set of APIs that allows users to customize appearances of dashboards to match their applications. QuickSight silos the data and makes sure that it is secure and only accessible to users with the right permissions. QuickSight has pre-built models and can be integrated with other machine learning models from Amazon SageMaker and can be used to perform advanced analytics without much data science experience. It also has a capability to generate dashboard summaries that are easily interpreted by the users. An interesting and powerful feature of QuickSight is that it allows users to query business intelligence questions using simple and plain English. Lastly, QuickSight has great applications in anomaly detection as well as machine learning forecasting. In this video, we will understand how Amazon QuickSight works, what is the typical terminology used, and some of its use cases. The following terminology is used in Amazon QuickSight. Caller identity is the identity of the AWS users that makes an API request on Amazon QuickSight. To avoid adding multiple accounts that belong to the same Amazon QuickSight subscription, an invoker identity is used to approve callers. QuickSight ARN or Amazon resource name are used to identify resources that can exist for groups or users and even dashboards. Now let's have a look at Amazon QuickSight pipeline. The pipeline for Amazon QuickSight involves collecting and loading of data from the origin sources or devices into cloud-based servers or on-site premises. Then this data is accessed using QuickSight to create interactive dashboards, summary reports, and embedded analytical interfaces. QuickSight can be connected to operational databases such as RDS to access data or to data warehouse such as Amazon Redshift. It can fetch data from data lakes such as S3, which are accessed by AWS Glue crawlers that feed the data into services such as Athena or EMR, which finally are connected to QuickSight for creating visual dashboards. 
Hi, in this video, you will get introduced to the AWS QuickSight console and its main components that make QuickSight a powerful visualization and a BI tool. First of all, from the AWS Management Console screen, we can use the search bar on the top to search for AWS QuickSight. The first result, after typing in AWS QuickSight in the search bar, should show the QuickSight link with an appropriate name. On clicking that, we will be taken to a QuickSight console. AWS requires a different account under your AWS account to set up your QuickSight account. To sign up for a QuickSight account, let's click on Sign up for QuickSight on the center of the screen. Based on your requirement, you can choose between a standard and an enterprise account. For this video, let's choose an enterprise account, scroll down and click Continue on the bottom right of the screen. Scrolling back on top of the new screen, we can create and configure our QuickSight account. Under the Addition section, we can continue with the default option. Then, under the QuickSight Region section, we can use the drop down to pick up our favored region. This region would denote where we would like our server to be hosted. Since on this account we are running most of other AWS services in US East region, let me go ahead with North Virginia region as that may lower the data transmission cost when I share my live dashboard with other customers. On scrolling down, we are required to set up our QuickSight account name. We will need this account name to sign in to the QuickSight console. On selecting the text box under QuickSight account name, you can type in the name that you would want to keep. For this video purposes, let me type in info hyphen techmendis. Next, we are required to give in an email address where AWS will send us notifications. On clicking the tab key on your keyboard, you can type in the relevant email address. Let me type mine. And lastly, on scrolling down, we are required to choose from where all in the AWS ecosystem can QuickSight access the data. We can select between Redshift, RDS, or connect to S3 buckets or Athena, or even connect to S3 storage analytics and IoT analytics. For the purpose of this video, I'm choosing all the options except for IoT analytics. Moreover, if you've noticed, I've also selected one S3 bucket that's relevant to our purpose. Once you've configured the data sources according to your requirements, you can click on the finish button on the bottom right of the screen. Now that QuickSight is set up on our account, we can click on to the go to Amazon QuickSight button on the left center of the screen. We have now logged into the QuickSight console. Before proceeding to develop our first visualization tool, there are three main components that we should be familiarized with. These are displayed on the left panel of the console. These are Dashboards, Analysis, and Datasets. Under Dashboard, you will get a view of all the available visualizations that you would have created and are ready to be shared with your customers or your users. Your customers would be able to view and interact with these visualizations, but only in read-only mode. The visualizations under Dashboard are created under the Analysis section where we will be able to transform our data set into visualizations such as charts or bar graphs and etc. Moreover, these visualizations can be made to be interactive with intelligent ML insights. The interactions could be done by way of filters, slicing of data, and other such data manipulation methods. ML insights are a feature of QuickSight and can be configured according to the data set. Lastly, the datasets are the foundation on which visualizations are developed. Every visual created on QuickSight uses datasets at its base. To get started with creating a dataset, we can first click on the datasets header on the left panel of the screen. On the dataset screen, we can click on the new dataset button on the top right of the screen. The current screen shows all the possible services and sources of data that can be integrated with QuickSight. Starting from local databases, stored in different formats such as CSV, JSON, etc. to connecting to data sources in AWS ecosystems such as RDS, S3, Redshift, and etc. We can also connect to third-party data sources hosted locally, on-premise, or in cloud. These databases include MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle, and etc. 
on scrolling down, we will see other third party apps such as Twitter, which can be used to build and explore data through visualizations or hosted on our dashboard through an app. Now, scrolling back up, for this video, we will be uploading Bitcoin transactions data stored locally in JSON format on my machine. To do the upload, I can click on the first icon that reads Upload a file and select the relevant file from my computer. On clicking the Upload File button, I can choose the required file and click on Option Choose to start integration of my data. The file record contains about 700,000 transactions, so it could take a while. At this point, we will end this video and in the next demo, we will use the uploading dataset to create a visualization. In this demo, we will use QuickSight to create a visualization using a dataset that we have already connected with our AWS QuickSight account. In the previous video, we connected an abridged version of the Bitcoin blockchain database. This is a time series database which includes the Bitcoin address where an amount of Bitcoin is credited or debited and includes the value of Bitcoin that is credited or debited. For the purpose of this video, we will use the same dataset to familiarize ourselves with QuickSight analysis features and capabilities. In order to begin, let us go to the Analysis tab on the left console of the screen. The new screen displays an area which would show our analysis once we have created a few of those analyses or just one of those analyses. To create our first analysis, let us click on the New Analysis button on the top right of the screen. On the new screen, the datasets that are available for use are listed. In our previous demo video of QuickSight, we uploaded a JSON dataset. The listed dataset on current screen is just that. So let us open the dataset named public ledgerjson The dataset is set to have 709,534 rows. Let us click on the Edit Dataset button on the new dialog box to familiarize and modify the dataset. On the current console window, we can modify the dataset by updating its columns or establishing some filters before we create an analysis on the database. We can even add a new calculated field based on other fields in the dataset. Now let us examine the fields that exist in the dataset displayed in a table on the right center of the screen. Just a quick recap, the time series dataset represents the amount of bitcoins transacted along with the name of its public account. This public account is denoted by the address field, the amount of Bitcoin transacted is denoted by the value field, and the time of the transaction is denoted by the time field. On the left panel of the screen, we have options that can help us modify the dataset. We can add a calculated field, we can add some filters, or we can exclude some fields. Now, on the left panel, let us open the excluded field options. Under the excluded field option, we see that we have excluded two of the fields. We can exclude or include any field by clicking on the three dots next to the field name. At this point, we don't want to exclude any field and we are ready to go to the analysis area with time, value and address fields. So, once our modifications are done, we can click on the save and visualize button on the top right of the screen. On clicking this button, we will be taken to an analysis area. Once our analysis console is prepared with our dataset, we can continue to visualize our dataset. What we see on the screen is the authoring and content creation area where we can visualize, explore, and analyze the data. In the left console, we can see the fields of the dataset that we have chosen, namely address, time, and value fields. To create a simple and quick visualization, we can simply click on the fields we are interested in and the autograph feature of QuickSight will create a first draft of an optimized chart. So let us select value and time field for now. Now our automated graph is getting created. The chart that we see on the center of the screen is automatically optimized by Amazon QuickSight. However, if the automatically optimized chart is not what we need, we can select different chart options from the palette in the left panel. This panel is located on the bottom of this left panel. For our purpose, let us select the icon for stacked bar combo chart. On the top of the screen is a field well area that we can expand by clicking it with a single left click. In the field well area, we can simply drag and drop fields between the inputs of our chosen chart. 
So let us drag the address field from the left console into the group for bars input on the field well area. The chart will now update to show the new information. The chart on the center screen is updated with the three fields with time on x axis, value in bars. Following the same process, we can add more visualizations in the same workspace by clicking on the Add button on the top left of the screen. We can add a new visual or a new insight and place new title and description for the dashboard. Right now, our dashboard only contains single visualization. And then, once we are done with our analysis and adding multiple visualizations, we can resize and reposition the visualizations to create a dashboard. We can reposition the chart by clicking on the chart and dragging it across the screen area. We can even resize the chart by clicking and dragging the squares on the edges of the chart. Now, when we are done with the analysis, we can share the dashboard in read-only mode with our users. We can simply click on the share button on the top right and publish the dashboard and share our analysis. There are many more features in Amazon QuickSight that can be utilized to create impactful and interactive dashboards. I would urge you to try these features with data sets that are relevant to your business. In this video, we will learn about the basics of Amazon EMR and its benefits. Amazon EMR, also known as Elastic Map Reduce, is a service that helps businesses meet their big data analysis needs and closely integrates with other platforms such as Amazon EC2 for virtual servers and Amazon S3 for storage data. As businesses face many challenges in handling really large volumes of data, some of these challenges can be resolved by using EMR. Some of these challenges include massive storage capacities, operational performance, optimally functioning array of networks along with security concerns to name a few. Now let us answer what is Amazon EMR. EMR is a cloud-based computing service that allows users to process very large amounts of data using open tools such as Apache Spark, Hive, Flink, Hudi and Presto that are deployed as service in the cloud. This bypasses the need for on-site infrastructural management and the coding needed for petabyte scale computing. Also, as EMR is integrated with EC2 and S3, users can access the auto-scaling capabilities as they gather more data. Now, let's look at the benefits of using Amazon EMR. The major benefit of using EMR is that it saves cost for users as they do not have to build their own clusters in a local data center on-site. It also allows users to pay per instance and not for the infrastructure that is being utilized. Amazon EMR allows users to compute large amounts of instances at any scale and automatically increases or decreases the number of instances, providing elasticity to the users. Amazon EMR is reliable as it retries failed tasks and automatically replaces any instances that are not performing optimally. EMR is also very secure as it automatically configures firewall settings and control network access to the instances. In this video, we will understand the use cases for EMR and learn when to deploy it. We will also review the major differences between EMR and AWS Glue. Some use cases for EMR include the following. ETL jobs. EMR can be used to perform, extract, transform, load workloads in a cost-effective manner. EMR can analyze clickstream data from Amazon S3 by using Spark or Hive. For example, clickstream data can be used for customer segmentation and to understand preferences for better ad targeting. EMR has built-in machine learning tools such as Apache Spark, MLib for scalable machine learning algorithms and for creating predictions. EMR can be used for real-time streaming. Streaming data pipelines can be created on EMR by analyzing events from streaming data from services such as Amazon Kinesis in real-time. Now, let's review the major differences between Amazon EMR and AWS Glue. First, let us look at the characteristics of Amazon EMR. EMR requires the necessary infrastructure for big data operations. Because EMR is not a serverless platform, it lowers the usage cost. EMR works better for cases which have a fixed requirements. 
EMR has a host of other use cases other than ETL operations. On the other hand, AWS Glue is a serverless platform and therefore it has high operational costs. Glue is better suited for requirements that are flexible and need scaling. Glue is specifically designed for ETL operations and is faster than Amazon EMR for ETL operations. In summary, Glue is useful when requirements are flexible and only ETL operations need to be performed, while EMR is better suited when the necessary infrastructure is available and it is a lot cheaper to run. In this video, we will understand how the Apache Hadoop open source framework works with Amazon EMR and see some of its real world use cases. Apache Hadoop is an open source project that is used to efficiently process very large datasets. Hadoop enables clustering commodity hardware to analyze large datasets in parallel instead of using one large machine for analytics. This enables Hadoop to process big data workloads and become very scalable based on the requirements. Hadoop has various applications within its ecosystem for performing analytics. Amazon EMR works with Hadoop and allows users to create and manage customized, configured, and elastic clusters of Amazon EC2 instances that run Hadoop. By using Hadoop on Amazon EMR, users can initialize new Hadoop clusters dynamically thereby significantly reducing the time needed to make resources available for analytics and increasing agility across organization. Other services such as Amazon S3, Kinesis, Redshift, and DynamoDB can be integrated to the Hadoop environment within EMR enabling efficient data movement. EMR takes care of Hadoop's infrastructure requirements such as configuration, networking, server installation, security, and its maintenance. With Amazon EMR, users have the flexibility to launch clusters in any AWS region, therefore significantly improving cluster availability and building contingencies in cases of disasters. Now, let us look at some of the use cases of Apache Hadoop. Hadoop is commonly used for analyzing clickstream data to process logs that are generated by mobile and web applications, perform petabyte scale analytics, analyze large scientific data sets efficiently and for ETL operations like collecting, sorting and aggregating big data sets. In this video, we will understand how the Apache Spark, an open source framework, works with Amazon EMR and see some of its real world use cases. Apache Spark is an open source framework that is primarily focused on interactive queries, machine learning, and dealing with real-time workloads. Spark does not have its own storage and runs analytics on other data stores or storage systems such as Redshift, Amazon S3, or Hadoop distributed file systems. Amazon EMR can be used to run Apache Spark as it allows quick creation of Spark clusters using the EMR API. EMR platforms offers quick connectivity with Amazon S3, integration with Amazon EC2, AWS Glue Data Catalog, and AWS type functions can also be leveraged. Now, let us look at some of the benefits of Amazon EMR. EMR has a runtime environment for Apache Spark that is up to three times faster than clusters without EMR runtime. These benefits in turn enable leveraging the capabilities of Apache Spark more efficiently through Amazon EMR. In this course, we learned about Amazon Athena and its concepts along with the demo. Then we learned about Amazon QuickSight, its concepts, its features along with the demo. Then we learned about Amazon EMR use cases and its integration with Apache products. In the next course, we will have an overview of feature engineering.